Hey guys, it's Lisa here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing all of you how to make a digital student notebook. Some of the reasons that these notebooks are so great, if I had to choose just a few reasons, is that they, one, they offer the students a place to write notes during synchronous learning. Uh, they also provide a space to record student and teacher communication, so you can kind of use this as a logbook um, for them to kind of for like a social emotional piece, like how are you doing today, kind of as a check-in, okay, you can, you can write back to them, it's personal, they'll each have their own, it's a great place to provide feedback, especially if you decide to put some activities in these notebooks, um, because you're doing it in slides, that'll be super easy, and it's also a place to house maybe class expectations, um, if an internet agreement, a class syllabus, because if they're using these every single day um, during, during learning, then they're more apt to to see them and have the tab where they can just click to look at them rather than maybe putting them in the resources or material section rather of google classroom um, another great feature about these notebooks is that they give you the ability to customize them based on your students interests so for example if you teach the younger grades and you have a class of, of a lot of girls and maybe they're interested in uniforms you can go ahead and you can customize the colors like i have here in this example um, with like unicorn colors and you could even add an image of a unicorn down here if you really wanted to another great idea for customization is that if you especially if you teach the older grades you can add your school's name and your mascot to the front cover along with the school colors just to show some school spirit okay um, so this video we're not only going to cover the shapes needed to create your own notebook from scratch and customize it the way that i did but we are also going to access and edit the master slide so that the parts of the notebook that you do not want students to be able to move are basically locked in place they're not going to be able to mess with them um, to start off i'm going to show you the example here that i made of my student notebook and i'm going to make all of this available to you afterwards in one of my toolkits um, I created a bunch of themed toolkits with tutorials and freebies or resources to help you at any stage of your interactive teaching journey. And to access that, if you're interested, all you're going to have to do is to look in the description box of this tutorial and click the link. Uh, I suggest that once you do that and you open the toolkits, that you come up here to file. Okay, and then you go to add shortcut to drive. Okay, um, you can make a copy. The problem with making a copy is that when I add new themed toolkits later on, you're not going to have access to them. So by saving it to your drive, you'll have access to the actual toolkit file, and then you can open it at any time and see any um, additions that have been made to it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, just to show you this one, I'm gonna put this into present mode. Okay, and I have it here. Now this I did with WordArt, uh, with, uh, yeah, WordArt in Google Slides. If you want, you can just have them be able to type it in, okay? Again, you're gonna know based on the level that you're teaching and, and on your students uh, that what they're able to handle. So that's a decision that you're gonna have to make. But here I have the different sections and as I pop them open, you'll see there's kind of like a similar color in the background. Okay, and there they are. Okay, something else, because they're going to be writing in these in, not in present mode. Okay, so I have here, I have pre-made text boxes that we're going to create in the master slide, which is why it says here, click to add title. Um, the other one says click to add text. And I'm going to show all of you how to do that. But if you look here, I cannot touch anything. Okay, nothing will move. The text boxes, yes, but unfortunately you have to have um, those kind of be interactive in order for the students to write in them. So worst case scenario is if they accidentally delete them, they could always go in and add another box. So this is the example of mine. Um, something else that you can do is you can always add to the end another, another um, slide and you could do like a back page. So I could go ahead and copy the shape from up here. I could probably make it white or maybe like a solid turquoise color. Um, but if I wanted to maybe add images to the back page that could be moved. This way the students, you could call it like the sticker page. And if they wanted to decorate the front of their notebook, so if you wanna make it like a solid color, you could go ahead and just make it a solid color or use a gradient, which I'll cover in the tutorial. And then you could offer them stickers. And maybe this way it would be easier for you rather than creating a bunch of different notebooks. You could just make one page with a whole bunch of stickers and then they can decorate their notebooks with the stickers. Okay, um, we're gonna, go on to a blank slide. And something that I want to 
um, bring up right away is you need to create these based on what you think is going to be best for your students. So for me, I found that by going to file and then coming down to page setup, um, clicking here and going to custom, I liked having a 10 by 12 inch slide. Again, base, like some people like them more landscape and that's okay too, so that it almost looks like maybe just the top half of a notebook, okay? Um, I, I liked this because I like to be able to see the entire front notebook. And um, an eight and a half by 11 or eight by 11 and a half, whatever it is for a standard size piece of paper. Um, I wanted a little bit bigger because I wanted to have space on the side for my tabs. Because Some people prefer to put the tabs on the side or the top. Okay, you could do either one. Uh, this is what worked best for me. Okay, so um, from here, the first thing that I wanted to do is to make sure that I had the pattern that I wanted. Okay, um, if you choose to do a pattern. So I went to Google Image. Um, just to save some time in advance, I had already searched because for this example, I'm going to do my school spirit. Okay, so I work for um, a high school and our colors are green and gold and our mascot uh, is the griffin. So here I found this in advance and I saved it to my computer. So from here, what I did then was to get to the master slide, which I discussed earlier, you're going to click up here, okay, where it says slide and you're going to come down to edit master. Okay, you'll see this box, this black box that maybe some of you have not seen before pop up. Okay, um, my first slide here is the master slide. That is where I would go and if I had a standard font that I wanted to be used throughout the slide, okay, that, that's where I'm gonna put all of that in. Um, I'm not going to do any of that now just because I don't have a standard font that I'm going to be using, you know, for, for the examples here. Um, I'm going to be looking more at where it says layouts and down. Okay, now these layouts um, are similar to the layouts that you'll see if I leave the master slide and I go up to layouts here, that's where these are popping up. Okay, so that, that's, that's these. I'm going to go back in. Okay, and I'm going to go to the first box here and I'm just going to delete everything. Okay, there it is, it's gone. Okay, I'm gonna go now and I'm going to insert the image of the pattern that I want for the front of my notebook. Okay, there it is, green and gold. And for the most part, I'm gonna be able to do all the same stuff here as I normally would. So if I double click it, those little black lines pop up so that I can crop the image. Okay, and I'm gonna flip this because I want the glitter at the bottom. Okay, and then I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move it down because I definitely wanna make sure that I leave enough space at the top for my tabs. Okay, without it coming off the page. So I actually might have to make that a little bit smaller. Okay, so from here, I wanna make it that composition notebook shape. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come up here where the crop symbol is and then there's this little arrow for the drop down menu if i click there where it says mask image and i hover over shapes and then go to the right i could make this image any of these shapes so i'm going to choose the second to last one here on the top row um round same side quarter rectangle is what it's called okay and then if you see here i this is my little dot here to rotate the image Okay, I can expand or shrink the image to resize. And then there are these two yellow dots. Okay, and those dots, if I grab this one here, if I left, left click and then drag down, you'll see that it makes the edges not as rounded. Okay, so it looks a little bit more like a notebook. Okay, there we go. Now, something else that I like to do is to go to format options and then click this box here that says drop shadow. Okay, if I click on the word drop shadow, a, drop, a menu drops down, and I also like to move the distance over a little bit so that it creates a little bit more of a shadow. Normally it's like a four or a five, okay. Now if I click here, you'll see it just, it did add a little bit of depth to, to my shape. Okay, and then what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna add a binding to this notebook. So in order for me to do that, 
I went back up to shapes and I clicked the rectangle. And I'm gonna come up to the top. Don't worry about making it perfect to the corner. You can always go back and fix that afterwards. I have a way to actually make it almost perfect. Okay, there it is. Um, and for the colors I have here, I think that this would be better black. So I'm gonna come up to my paint can. I'm gonna make it black. And I wanna make sure that it has a little bit of a, a border, but I don't want it to be too different. If I click out, you'll see that's well, a little bit too, I'm not happy with the color. So I'll use that one. Okay, that's fine. Um, you see here, it's not exactly to the edge. And I know if I try to move it myself, I'm gonna move it too far to the right or the left. I know that if I use my arrows, it's also gonna move too far to the right or the left. So when you have a, a shape that you want moved or an image that you want moved and you want it just moved like ever so slightly, the trick is to click on it, hold down your shift key, and then use your arrows. And it, then, then it'll only move the image one pixel at a time. So there I see that it's perfectly aligned. Um, I'm just gonna put it a little bit up. There we go. That looks good. All right, perfect, wonderful. Now all I have to do is I'm gonna add my shape here, um, like on the cover of my example that I had shown you earlier to say composition book. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the shape. I use the rectangle with the rounded edges. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna leave it that color and I'm gonna do control C, control V. On a Mac, it would be um, command C, command V to make a duplicate image. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Okay, because I wanna see those lines. And I want it a little more prominent. So I'm going to actually make sure that the border is black and I'm going to change it to a two. And then I'm gonna click the inside shape. And again, I'm gonna click my little pencil up here where, the where it's for the border. I'm gonna make sure it's black. And the three lines here that are in order of thickness. I'm going to click those to make sure that that is a two. And again, you'll play around with it until you're happy. Uh, to make the line at the bottom for the name, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click line. And I'm just going to stretch that across the bottom. And the same as I did for my outlines, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that this is like the darkest black. Sometimes it defaults to like I want them slightly more gray. And I'm going to change the thickness to a two. Okay. Beautiful. Now, if I double click inside the box, you'll see that the little, um, the line for typing pops up. And I wanna make sure that I am centered, first of all. So I click the three dots, and then I'm gonna come over to here where it says align, and I'm gonna click the center one. Okay, I also want to make sure that my text is bolded. So there's that. And the font that I found, to me, that looks probably the most similar or very similar to a composition notebook font is called Impact. Okay, and I'm gonna put this to like a size 27, maybe, uh, maybe like 24. Okay, and I'm gonna type composition book. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hit the Enter key to move it up. Okay, and there we go. And that can actually be even a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna highlight it and then just click the plus sign. Perfect, there we go. Okay, so something that I want to show all of you now is that if I leave the master slide, okay, this is here. If I click the drop down menu of the plus to add another slide, you'll see that it's popping up here as one of my layouts. Okay, so that's there, but mostly, most important, if I try to move something, nothing is moving, which is absolutely beautiful because these are the parts of your digital notebook that you do not want your students to mess with. So going back to the master, okay, I can then come down to another one. Okay, I can delete that box there. Okay, in advance, I had found uh, Google Imaged uh, paper, like lined paper. Okay, so I'm just going to go to insert image, upload from my computer. Okay, and 
means right here, it says paper. There it is. Perfect. Okay. And I'm just going to move this down a little bit. I just want to make sure it's not off the page. And shrink it because I remember we want to have space for our tabs on the top or on the side again, whichever you prefer. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. All right, perfect. And then again, you know, me with my drop shadow. Just to add a little bit of, and I have to make sure that the border is black. And I'm going to move that to it too. Okay, so there we go. There's my, my paper. Now to put the title box at the top and to put the text box in the middle, like my example had, all I have to do now is come up to where it says text box and I'm going to insert a title placeholder. Okay, so there's that. And I'm just gonna drop it up here in the top because that's where my title's gonna go and the students can go ahead and type in a title. Okay, they can, if you know, like I said, if you have the older ones and they're quite familiar with Google Slides, you can allow them to uh, put in word art, but this is, you know, kind of like the foolproof way to do this. And then to add the text box at the bottom, you're gonna go to body text placeholder. Okay, so that again, that's from that little drop down menu up here where the text box is. Okay, and I'm gonna start here. Don't worry about it being perfect. You can always move it afterwards. Okay, and then all of this text is gonna pop up. Do not worry, don't try to delete it. Okay, it's not gonna go anywhere. You will not see this when you leave the master slide. Okay, um, which I'm not gonna do yet because it's not ready. But um, something else that we need to add here are the tabs. Okay, and the tabs in order to make those. Again, I went to shapes and I just used the same shape that I had used to create the front cover of my notebook. Okay, for this example, I'm just going to put three just because it'll be enough for you to all get the, the, the gist of how to do this. Okay, and then here I make sure that I align everything. Okay, there we go. I, I see the red line pop up, so I know that these are in line. And then now I know that they're touching. Perfect. Okay, and then I just want to go back and make sure that my borders are black and at a thickness of two because I want them to have some kind of definition so that you can see them. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Okay. And then I want to choose a background color. Um, so if I make this tab here, let's say like a green color, going along with the school spirit, I'm gonna make this one kind of a gold. I can do what's called gradient on this one. That's a mixture of green and gold. So you go up to that paint can, you click gradient, and you go to custom, okay? I'm gonna add a dot because I want three colors. So I'm gonna go green, I'm gonna do gold, and then I want white. Okay, there we go. And I'm happy with the way it looks with the, the linear. Uh, you can also click linear and then do radial, but that's, I don't think for the tab that that's going to look right. So there we go, I'm gonna click okay. And then you're gonna see there. I can click these to add text. So I can do class notes. I can do student, teacher, communications, and then here I can write class expectations, okay? And I'm just gonna double click to highlight the text, and I want that centered. So from the three dots here, you're gonna come down, go to align center. I'm gonna do the same thing with class notes, okay? And I want this bolded and impact, make it a little bit bigger. 
And I'm going to do the same with these other ones. Okay. A little smaller. And we're going to finish up the last one here. And that I can make a little bit bigger. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now that I have the tabs, the great thing is, is that I can make copies of this layout on my master slides. So all I have to do is make sure that I'm clicked. You can see the yellow line around the slide here and hit Control D. On a Mac, it's going to be Command D. There we go. And I have three tabs, so I'm going to need one more. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now when I go back to the first one here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two tabs and I'm going to put them behind the sheet of paper. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to order, send to back, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Okay, because just like in the example that I showed you, I really want to make sure that this one is standing out if it's the one that I'm on. Okay, I'm also going to change the background of this to a similar color. Okay. This way it further differentiates the page that I'm on. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Now I can go to this one here. And I'm going to send then this one to the back. And the third one. Perfect. Okay, and then we can make this like another yellow color. Okay, something a little lighter. Okay, that's fine. And then we're gonna go to the last page. And I'm gonna send the first two to the back on this one. That's perfect. And now to do the backgrounds. And because I use the gradient, background for my tab, I'm going to use a gradient background for the page. And you see, because I've already used it in this project, it's still down at the bottom under custom. So all I have to do is click it. I don't have to go through all of the trouble again. There we go. And that's the page. All right. Now we have our three pages here. You just want to go back and take a look, make sure that the right tabs are sticking out. They all are. Okay, I'm not going to mess with it again, but you see this, I probably would have wanted this to be a little bit higher up. I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay, um, but you're probably wondering that why these three are here and they're not showing up on the sides. Okay, um, the reason being is that I haven't added them yet. So right now they're only layouts. So what I mean is, is that if I wanted to add them right now, which I'm not going to, I just want to show you for those of you wondering. Okay. From here, I would just go up to the plus sign, and then there's that little downward facing triangle. If I click that and I scroll down, you'll see that my other layouts are here. Okay, a little scattered, but they're all here. Okay, so all I would have to do is click them like a normal layout that's already um, like the default layout in Google Slides. All right, I'm gonna go back into edit my mouse up. Okay, this is all good. Okay, now the last thing that I, I really have to do here because I'm not going to add a back page for this one, um, just something to keep in mind is, is that if you want more pages in a section, all you have to do is duplicate them. Okay, so you would just add the extra pages. It's not a big deal. Um, but you're going to need to add a clear shape, a transparent shape over top of your your tabs here in order to make sure, and you do that in the master slide so that they can't be moved, but just to make sure that the, the links are going to work, they're gonna to link to the other pages. So I'm going to do that by going back up to my shapes. I'm gonna choose obviously the same shape that I, I chose to make the tabs. And I'm just going to stretch it. Okay, I'm gonna go back up to my paint can. And I'm gonna click here where it says transparent. And there it goes. Okay, from there you can just control C and control V or command C and V to make duplicate shapes. Okay. 
And there we go. Um, something you're going to want to do is to make sure that your your border of the shape is transparent as well. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Oh, that one didn't go transparent. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click these three transparent shapes. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to go down to the next slide. And I'm just going to hit control V and they're going to pop right into place. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this slide. And because I made duplicates of the first slide that I did, which was this one with the, the paper, they're, go they're identical. So everything's going to be in the same space. This is why I told you in the beginning, it's better to make one exactly the way you want it and then to duplicate it because then it makes adding the transparent shapes easy because when you copy and paste images from one slide to the other, they will go into the same exact spot on the second slide. So that's just a little trick, not only for this, but for any project that you're doing. Okay, and now we are going to want to link the slides. Um, also, we're gonna add our tabs to this up here, and I should have done that earlier. Okay. Oh, and wait, I didn't, I didn't want that. Okay, hold on one second. There we go, perfect. And I'm just going to move these all to the back. So at this point, you should know how to do that. Okay. And now I'm going to add my links. So all I need to do to do that is to click on the tab that I want. I'm going to go to, there's a couple ways to do this. You can either go to insert, link, Click where it says slides in this presentation. Oh, and right now I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is because I haven't added my other slides. So I'm actually going to do that first. So let's X out of our master slide. I'm going to come here and there's my first one. There it goes. I'm going to add my second one. And then my third. There we go. Okay, so now. Now I can go back into my master and I can link my tabs to my pages. Okay, back up to our front page. Click here. I'm going to go to insert link. And the first one's going to be on slide two. And I'm going to hit apply. The third one. The second one here is going to be to link to slide three. Another way you can do this is by hitting Control K or Command K if you're on a Mac. Okay, and that's like a little shortcut. Slide three, hit apply, and then again to slide four. Okay, perfect. And now I'm gonna to wanna to do the same thing here. Now, just so you know, I could have done the same thing. I could have linked these and then I've done this all on the first one and then copy and pasted them and then the links would have just copied. Um, and I didn't do that ahead of time, but just so you know, I mean, it, there's just, there are ways to do this a little bit faster, um, but sometimes you don't think about it until afterwards and don't worry, um, you're gonna figure out what works for you. So again, this is going to be slide two. This is going to be slide three. Okay. And this is going to be slide four. Perfect. Okay. I'm just going to finish up doing this. Yeah, using the keyboard shortcuts is, is so much better. It definitely makes things go faster. OK, 
Okay, and now just the last one. So once I link these last three tabs to slides two, three, and four, Okay, I also want to show you um, if I wanted to, or you know, if you want to, if I come here to this one here, it says that you can rename. So if I know that when I'm going to be doing this, and if you have a lot of pages, you might want to, um, but if I wanted this to go to, um, if I know this is page slide two, and this is gonna be uh, page one rather of the book, and it's gonna be on slide two, I can always rename this slide two. And then when you go into your templates over here, let me X out of this, you'll see that this is now named slide two. So you can actually name your templates just so that you know. Okay, and I'm gonna test this out. I just wanna make sure that my links are working. All right, and I'm gonna, let's see. Okay, so class notes, yep, it takes me to the green. Perfect. And then you can actually go out of order because from any page, you should be able to get to any tab. And obviously it's working, perfect. Okay, um, and now if you want, um, and I'm not gonna show this, but um, I'll just show one here. Let's say on this page, um, you always want it to have on, on each one of your pages, like it's just a little shape to, to link to, um, you go into my master, um, something to link to the cover page. You could always go to your shapes and maybe add like an arrow, you know, like a back arrow. Okay, and you can add that down here. And you could type front cover and then you would just link this to the first slide. Okay, but just make sure you, again, you put your transparent shape over top of it to make sure that that works for you. Okay. And that right there is how we make our digital notebooks. Um, so like I said, there are so many different ways that you can use these. If you choose to, you can have um, activities or lessons within the notebook that you do for the students in advance. You can use it as communication with the students, kind of as a social emotional check-in for them to see you know, how, how they're doing on a daily basis, especially during times like this, you really don't know what they're gonna be going through. You might learn a lot about your students. Um, great to provide feedback. And something with feedback, um, if I come out of here, okay, um, we can pretend that there was something written on here. The students did something, something really cute that you can do when you're checking your students' work and, and using the comments, okay? So I can um, put a comment here and say, oh, you did a great job. Or something that's super cute is you can go up to your Bitmoji extension here. I see that this says good job and I can always go down and I can basically use these as a sticker to let my students know what a great job they're doing. So I really hope that this video helped all of you. If you have any questions, comment down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. Take care everyone.